I wanted to ask your thoughts on my life companion recently died from liver complications due to cancer. One moment he thought he had arthritis in his shoulder. Next, we found out he had cancer. The next week, they're telling us that he has to go to hospice. And he died at the age of 34. All of this occurred quickly within a few weeks with very little time to truly process the change and adapt. I meditated every day at his bedside in the hospital. And when I struggled, I tried to read the Tao for a better understanding of how I might help him or help myself remain soft and accept the now that was happening and try not to judge it or make something other. I was wondering if you might have some insights on how to embrace changes that are rapid or that occur so quickly. I'm feeling rather lost at the moment. So, yeah, sending love to you and for your loss and, yeah, to have your life partner and loved one to leave you in just a time of a few weeks is really difficult. And that is, you know, earlier today talking about the transmutation of energy. That's, that's a lot of energy to work with. And grief and sorrow is a natural response to, to death. And we see grief in other animals. And so there is an intuitive emotional attachment that has been lost. You know, part of our emotional security and our sense of connection and identity, part of that as that loved one passes away that is ripped out of the heart and the heart needs time to mend. So again, as I was saying earlier with just the power of love and softness, words that you used, which is really beautiful to, yeah, just acknowledge the pain and to acknowledge the difficulty. Now, the Tao perspective can be helpful. You know, death in our societies are just a taboo. You know, I'm reading an amazing book called Being Mortal at the moment, and a whole medicalized approach to death where we will try and keep people alive long beyond the point at which our medical interventions are going to help that person. We keep on trying to keep people alive, even if, you know, that's not going to help them. And so, yeah, we have, we're not very good at talking about death. And so when something as sudden as the death of your loved one passing away in th just three weeks, Often, yeah, we need support to be able to process that. And so what's a Tao idea that can help you? Chapter 16 of the Tao Te Ching is a really beautiful chapter that I would invite you to read, chapter 16. It says, empty your mind of all thoughts, let your heart be at peace. Witness the flourishing of all things, but contemplate their return. All things return to the same source. To return to that source is to find stillness. And in that stillness, tranquility. When you remember when you, where you come from, you naturally become more lighthearted, more generous, more accepting. And even when you die, you're ready for death. Because although you know that this embodiment will pass away. You know that in a real way you will continue at one with the Tao. So looking out into the world, you know, we are in a planet bursting with conscious life. And we know that energy can only be transformed, not destroyed. And there's no reason to say that human consciousness is any different. 
where we don't really know what consciousness is. But it seems to me likely, and for the Buddhists and for the Taoists and for many spiritual trad traditions, that when we die, we return back to unity, back to a non-separation with the mysterious source, which is the source of all of our beings. We take this embodiment of a limited lifetime and then we pass away. A natural transformation, an, an essential transformation. And so, although I don't believe that we continue as George or, you know, your loved one, their spirit somehow stays in the universe and travels around without the body, I believe the body is essential for our consciousness to come into being. And when we die, we dissipate back into the universal consciousness. But that does mean that we can find a sense of connection and comfort and support from even death. That it is us returning back to connection with the mysterious source that we emerge from. So an invitation to just meditate with that chapter, getting out into nature to be part of this great miraculous unfolding that we are a part of. And playing with that idea while also honoring the grief that you feel. Another thing you could do is cry out injustice, you know, for your loved one to pass away at the age of 34. Where other people, you know, they may be smoking 50 cigarettes a day and they live to the age of 95. The reality of life is that the Tao doesn't pick and choose its winners. In the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu talks about how heaven and earth treat all beings like straw dogs. What are straw dogs? These are ceremonial pieces that you would do a ceremony celebrating uh, yeah, a time of year. I'm not sure what, what the straw dogs celebrated, but then they would be burnt. And so the straw dogs would be made and be celebrated and then they'll be burnt and they'll be gone. And so we're kind of like that as well. You know, we come into this embodiment, a celebration of the Tao, you know, this great miraculous coming together that we are but then just as quickly we can go and so the Tao doesn't pick and choose its winners and so what for our heart and for our mind can seem like injustice that your loved one could go so so early is you know just the workings of nature and something that although it's difficult to accept if we can accept that we find more flow and more ease because we're not resisting the inevitability of change or trying to kid ourselves into imagining that there'll be some deity that will uh, say, save specifically our loved ones. So a principle that the Taoists talk about is harmony. What is harmony? It's the integration of different things working together. Dun, da, da, da. That's the fifth part. If I could sing at the same time, those notes would sing together. That would be a harmony. And so harmony is not about smushing everything together, but instead the sounding of distinct notes within unity. And so can you just live the paradox on the one hand Understanding your connection to the universe and understanding the endless cycles of birth and death, that this is inevitable and actually essential to life and is the source of all the beauty in the universe. And so to celebrate death, while also at the same time honoring the grief, honoring the hurt, honoring the pain and that feeling of injustice that your loved one left so early. 
Can you hold both?